we did a podcast a few months ago on UEFI, and I I laid out the mechanisms. In fact, I think you also had me on your podcast. I was there. On, yeah, you, on, you. On, on 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 Twiat. We I I I, I uh, laid that out again. The extreme measures that UEFI goes through for the so-called secure boot process, where from the moment it starts, it verifies its its own firmware using certificates which which are burned into ROM or 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 or, or, or firmly uh, you know firmly placed at a lower level than the 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 BIOS firmware and every stage of the boot process is verified first before control is turned over to it. So you have to ask yourself, okay, how then can you have an UEFI rootkit? Well, you can have it if you are not using secure boot. It's that simple. And in fact, what was found, uh, as, as you said, among this hacking team data was that the hacking team offers to the customers of their RCS9, uh, we talked about that last week or the week before, RCS is their remote control system, which is, you know, their, their so-called RAT, uh, their remote access Trojan that allows, the, that, that we know that they have been selling to the, the U.S. Uh, NSA and the DEA and other in, uh, law enforcement in the United States and globally, and unfortunately a little too globally, to some repressive governments that are to, to whom, you know, a, a company based in Italy should not be able to legally sell um, their, their products. And um, so one of the features they offer, a, a piece of this, is a, a means for that technology to survive the the change of hard drive or reformatting of the hard drive. The there's a, a popular BIOS used in laptops. Uh, HP uses it. Dell, Lenovo, Acer, Asus, and Toshiba. Uh, it's made by Taiwanese company Inside, I N S Y D E, and that's their UEFI BIOS. Apparently, it's believed this could also function with uh, AMI's BIOS. And what this does, when you it it you you have to not be using secure boot, um, and it's believed that you need to have physical access to the laptop in order to install this. Although people who have looked at this have not ruled out the possibility that it could be installed remotely. When it comes up, um, it's got three modules. One is an NTFS file system module that allows it to read and gives it read and write access at the BIOS level. You know, not not in the OS in the BIOS. Uh, one for hooking the OS boot process, and another that checks to make sure that RCS is present on the on the uh, on on the file system. Uh, uh, which is running in the OS, which is on top of this UEFI. So together, those three modules check for the for two software agents. One is Scout XE, and the other is Soldier XE. Every time the system is rebooted, and if they don't exist, it reinstalls uh, Scout XE uh, and Soldier from a predefined location uh, uh, inside of itself. So even if you swap the hard drive, when you and install a new OS, uh, um, a, a new Windows OS, because that's what this infects, this thing emerges from the BIOS and reinstalls these programs and hooks them in to operate. This, and, is, this is like those the old uh, MBR viruses that we used to get back in uh, the, uh, the yep. 90s. The whole idea of you could yep. reformat it but if you didn't get rid of that one piece, it would just reinstall itself. But uh, Steve, yep. UEFI has a checksum, right? I mean, it, it knows how big it's supposed to be. So in the extraction of the firmware, this rootkit is going to install itself that it has to redo the checksum to match, and then it pushes it back into the UEFI memory? 
Well, okay, so one of the one of the problems with UEFI is its power. Back in the day, we had a, you know, in the you know, in the early days of the PC, the XP and so forth, we had a BIOS, the basic IO system, and it was basic. I mean, it occupied a small amount of ROM. It was originally ROM in those days, not even flashable, and it did you know, it read the keyboard. It could put text on the screen. Uh, and I mean, to tell you how old that was, it, it was able to do cassette IO was also built into the BIOS. So, I mean, it, you know, and it, it ran the printer port and this and initialized the serial ports and sort of performed the, the low level hardware startup. What we have today is a mixed blessing because the, the hardware platform has just gone crazy with amount of RAM, with all kinds of options and advanced interfaces. You know, it's a much more sophisticated platform. You even have things like a TCPI network stack built into the motherboard, even, even without the the, without the OS running on top of it. So, you know, if you're running an inter, you know, internet protocols on, on the motherboard, then you're dealing with something far more sophisticated. Well, e UEFI, the EFI BIOS, is a modular, a modular BIOS in which you can install additional components at, at you know, in order to suit the needs of, of the hardware platform on the motherboard. So, I mean, it it has a file system of its own. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's designed to accept additional modules, and and you have to register them and and let the the UEFI BIOS know that these modules are to be run at runtime. But that's part of what this installation process does. There's there's an installer that runs on a, a USB thumb drive that that in that installed that performs all of that work of installing this this root kit into an unprotected UEFI BIOS so that these modules run. And Trend Micro that covered this story said they asked themselves the question, how do you prevent this? And the answer is enable UEFI secure boot, update the firmware to its latest version, and use a strong BIOS UEFI access password. And then somebody who was who had physical access to your laptop uh, would not be able to access the BIOS and could not get in there because secure boot would be turned on. And of course, you know, this is why we're moving towards secure boot being turned on by default and maybe not something that, that end users are even going to be able to disable. We'll have to see how, how that, you know, resolves itself. I have to say, Steve, after I saw this story, I, I went through the different laptops in my lab, and I've got a current HP, a Dell, a Lenovo, a couple of Acer's, an Asus, and a <laughs> all Toshiba. Of them. All, all the targets. All the targets. Only one laptop, uh, and that was the new version of the Acer S7 that I got, had secure, uh, uh, secure boot turned on. Everything else had it off by default, including another one of my Acer's. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's not yet the standard. But l let me ask you this. I I'm intrigued by two possibilities. One is the idea of remote execution of this exploit. How, how could you possibly get access to the UEFI memory space while the OS is running? Because that's the only way that's going to work if, uh, if you're trying to do this remotely. And, and secondly... When we're talking about secure boot, it's supposed to—it's a software switch that keeps you from writing to the UEFI space. But how safe is that from actually being turned off remotely? Well, we just to answer your first question, we just covered about a month ago that flaw in the BIOS that was leaving the uh, essentially huge portions of the BIOS read-write when it should have been read-only. I mm -hmm. think it was in the Mac, right? Mm -hmm, um, right. And, and and so so there's an example of the firmware itself, despite all efforts, the firmware itself having um, vulnerabilities which are not widely known. So given the clear expertise of these guys, I wouldn't put it past them to have you know have come up with a way to circumvent these BIOS protections um, if. If the BIOS is not absolutely 
protecting itself from modification. And, and actually, and, uh, Digmax in the chat room mentions, and I completely forgot, forgot about this, Dell actually has some machines that have built-in out-of-band access to BIOS. And it's designed right. for enterprise deployment so that you could update the firmware without having to go from station to station to station. That, right. That's a hor horrific, horrific infection vector. And 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 the 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 Intel uh, the high end Intel motherboards also have uh, low level below the OS out of band access to uh, the hardware, which you know opens up all kinds of frightening possibilities. Okay, well I'm I'm not going to sleep anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, Steve.